Welcome to the selling show where we unpack, repack, and break down exactly how top experts sell their ideas, their value, and their services. This is your host, David Newman, and you are in the right place if you want better clients, bigger deals, and higher fees. how sometimes you just want someone who's like really smart, really experienced and has a lot of expertise. What do we call these people? It's ma, ma, ma. hang on, maven, maven. That's what it is. Well, I have your sales maven, the amazing Nikki Roush. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. What a nice way to open. Tell us about your mavenhood. Give us the Nikki Roush story <laughs> and what were some interesting pit stops along the way that brought you to the work that you're doing today? Well, I'm a sales coach and trainer. And I started my corporate career as a professional sales rep in the technology space. And while doing that, I was very interested in personal and professional development, started studying neuro linguistic programming. And found that I could bring that training, what I was learning, my NLP training, I could bring it into my sales conversations and demonstrations and all the travel that I was doing and the interaction with clients and just found that it really upped my communication skills. So when I started Sales Maven back in 2013, it was the idea of combining what I knew really worked well with my sales experience and my NLP experience. And this is what I teach people now. And I specialize in the conversation of closing the deal. So that's what I do now. So for the folks that do not know, let's just back up the truck half a step. Okay. Tell us about neuro-linguistic programming or NLP. Yeah. People think, is that like brain surgery? Or is that like, <laughs> does she write dictionaries? Is that the linguistic part? So it's not NPR, it's NLP. What is NLP? Give us the fifth grader version of what that is. The most basic version is it's the study of communication. So neuro, the way you process information in your brains. Linguistic is the language piece. So it's how you speak, how others speak to you and picking up the patterns of language. And then the programming part really is about habits and patterns. So depends on who you learn NLP from, but who I learned it from and what I use it for is to make me a better communicator. It's improved my listening skills. It's improved my ability to pick up on subtle cues that people will give in conversation and use that information to make it easier for people to stay in conversation with me and make it more comfortable for the other person. And all of that, while I get to adjust and be flexible, to make that conversation more meaningful and productive. So this is really about, it's a connection skill, yes. really, about yeah. connecting with people who might be wired a little bit differently or very differently than you are. Yeah. You know, the thing about it is like when you meet people who are very similar to you, it's easy to be in conversation with those people, right? Because we like people who are like us. Yeah. And the other thing is when you meet somebody who's like you, you think people who are like you are smart. Like, be honest. You meet somebody and you're like, you are so smart because we think alike. (laughs) We act alike. We do alike, right? But when you meet somebody who's very different than you, it's harder to be in conversation. It takes more energy. So in order to put the other person at ease, it's learning how to adjust your style a little bit. Not like throw out your authentic, genuine self, but just make some subtle adjustments to how you're showing up in conversation. And then it makes it easier for them to be in conversation with you. And from a sales perspective, what the result of that is, is people will be much more revealing about how to earn their business. People will be more inclined to listen to what it is that you have to offer. And then you go from there. I think people that just sort of steamroller through, because I I think you're right that Everyone has a very easy time talking to someone who's wired the same way they are. And when we talk to someone who's wired completely differently, if we're untrained or if if we don't like money, we're like, oh, well, they're idiots. They're idiots. They don't get it. They were a loud mouth or they were too analytical or they just Mm -hmm. wanted to make small talk and I, I couldn't get to the sale. Come on. And so 
you know, small talk people love small talk people. And, mm-hmm. you know, direct people love direct people. And analytical people love other analytical people. But it's like, what if you're trying to connect with all of your buyers, not just that little teeny tiny segment that thinks like you, talks like you, acts like you? That can be challenging. So tell us, what are some of the first couple of steps in your process that you share with your clients and audiences to get them out of their own kind of selling mode and get much more into connecting mode? Well, the number one thing that I'll say is it's learning how to ask questions, which you're the pro at, right? Like you just were on my podcast talking about how to know what questions to ask. So it's learning how to ask questions. And then it's adjusting some parts of your style. And the easiest one to adjust in your style is your rate of speech. And people often don't think about this. But if you're a really, really fast talker and you're talking to somebody who talks really slowly, it can feel uncomfortable for both parties to be in that conversation. So if you're willing to either slow down a little bit if you're talking to somebody who speaks a little slower than you or speed up a little bit if you're talking to somebody who's a really fast talker, it'll be easier for them to stay in conversation. And when you make adjustments to the other person, what happens really naturally in conversation is the other person will start to adjust to you a little bit as well. And then you find a happy medium. So it's not like, you have to talk really, really slow the whole time or talk really, really fast the whole time. You make a little bit of an adjustment, they'll start to adjust to you as well. In NLP terms, that's known as pacing and leading. And most salespeople show up and they're like, I'm just going to lead. You're going to do what I do and you're going to follow me. And people go, no, thanks. I'm out. So it's really about... Certainly, it's about questions, Mm -hmm. but it's also about how. It's about how we sell, not just the words. And this is... I think you and I may have a similar aversion to sales scripting. Yeah. Sales scripting that just literally say these words. Yeah. Because someone that has one personality style can say or ask those same words. Someone with a vastly different personality style can say or ask the same exact words. And one connects masterfully with that prospect. And one totally misses the mark and they're out in the wilderness and the prospect is like, wow, this person's a jerk. It's like, wait a minute, the script didn't work. It's like, well, there's no script that works and there's no script that doesn't work. It's, are you connecting? Because connection always works. That's right. And almost makes the words that you say much less important. So people are freaking out going, oh my God, Nikki, what do I say? And what do I say if this? And what do I say if that? If you're already connecting on a much deeper level earlier in the conversation, you could say all kinds of crazy nonsense and the sale will still move forward. Am I correct? Yeah. And I talk about that, you know, the foundation of everything I teach is built on rapport. And I think of everybody I come into contact with, I have a rapport bank account. And I'm either making deposits or when I'm making a misstep, it's a withdrawal. And the thing about it is the more deposits you make, you build up a balance. And when you have a balance with somebody, a rapport balance, they will give you more grace. But if you don't have a rapport balance, if you're just making withdrawal, 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 they'll go away. They'll want you to go away. They will not give you their hard-earned cash, right? So it's really important that it isn't... I mean, yes, words matter. They do, especially when you're communicating via email or DMs, things like that. Then words are really critical. And if you have a balance built up, people will give you grace. They don't expect you to say it perfectly or do it perfectly. And then there's this idea of voice quality. And voice quality is the, you know, that old saying, it's not what he said, it's how he said it. Yes. It's the how that also really plays a big factor in how that conversation goes. Because just like you said with scripts, you know, you can give two people the same scripts and one person can say it with certain inflection in their voice that lands softly to the other person, whereas somebody else will say it with a different inflection and they'll be like, why are you so bossy? You know, or why are you so aggressive? It's voice quality that also determines how things land. And that's the difference between having a deep, meaningful conversation, same words, 
versus an interrogation. It's like, yeah. stop grilling me. Stop yelling at me. <laughs> yes. We interrupt this interview with an important announcement. If you're committed to better clients, bigger deals, and higher fees, get over to doitselling.com right now and grab a copy of my new book. That's the deal, kids. Grab a copy of the new book and then get all the bonuses, companion tools, trainings, and downloads at doitselling.com. Buy the book, get the bonuses. Buy the book, get the bonuses. Buy the book, get the bonuses. That's how it works. I'll see you over there. So just to, to prove your point, which is absolutely spot on, years ago, we had a sales team and we would do call reviews. So you'd kind of break down, hey, here's what you did well. Here's what you did not so well. Early on, I was a little bit too granular and I was like line by line. Well, because I'm, I'm listening. You missed this opening. You should have said this. You dropped this ball. This should have been probed and investigated some more. One poor sales rep that I had working for me. This was like a 35-minute call. It was 31 bullets of call feedback. The interesting thing, Nikki, that person still bought. Even though my salesperson made 31 mistakes in my estimation, and it's like, well, the person bought. Why? Because they were great at connecting. They were great at the rapport piece. So the tactical, and by the way, I'm not saying you should make 31 tactical mistakes in a 35-minute sales conversation, <laughs> but I am saying People buy because of the connection. They don't buy because of the words that you said or didn't say or, or any of this stuff. They buy because of the certainty and the belief that you can help them get to a certain outcome or solve a certain problem. That salesperson was really great at the connection and the rapport and kept that going throughout the call. So the person felt heard, the person felt validated, the person felt respected. And I probably shouldn't have sent that 31-point email, but now you, you live, you learn. <laughs> So That's I, I such a great talk. example. Yeah, I know, right? Because it's like, hey, people think that we lose the sale on the tactical level and we really lose the sale or win the sale on the human level, right? Yeah, it's, it's nobody the human wants level. to be, yeah, nobody wants to be treated like a wallet walking around, right? right. If you treat right. people like they're just a wallet, they feel that from you. It comes across yes. and they will go other places because like we know, it's really easy to find somebody else that does whatever it is that you need done. Yes, totally, totally, totally. Well, tell us a little bit about the sales maven empire. What are the different revenue streams? What are the different services that you share with your clients and audiences? What are the kind of good, better, best, small, medium, large, whatever it might be? So I have a group coaching program. It's known as the Sales Maven Society. And that really is my opportunity where people get access to training content with me. They get access to live calls with me in a group setting. And they have access to ask me questions daily in a group where they can get some immediate feedback. And then I teach masterclasses once a quarter. That's a deep dive on a particular sales topic or strategy. I actually have five of them, but I usually only teach four a year. So they repeat once a year. And then I have my private coaching clients, the people who are wanting the... like I just want Nikki in my back pocket. I want to be able to ask her a question and get an immediate answer and coach to where we're you know, working together to do some business development, grow their... you know, scale their business. So Fantastic. Clients. I also want to ask you about your podcast because okay. you have a fantastic podcast that people need to know about and need to listen to. But there's kind of two tracks to the Sales Maven podcast, as I understand it. You have your regular episodes, and then you have the series that I was privileged enough to be on called Mastering Excellence. Tell us about your genesis as a podcast host and what a regular episode, quote unquote, because they're all special, but regular episode of the Sales Maven podcast is about and then how you came up with and how you continue to roll out this amazing kind of subset of special episodes called Mastering Excellence. Well, the podcast came about honestly because I was getting such I was getting so many new clients and when I would ask them like how do we get connected they would say, "Oh, I binge you on podcasts." And I thought, "Well, how can you binge me on a podcast? I don't have a podcast. That was really the catalyst for launching my own podcast. I thought, well, if people are actually going into Apple or wherever and searching for my name and listening to podcasts, 
there must be an audience out there for it. So I launched the Sales Maven podcast in 2020 with the idea that I would do solo teaching episodes. I would do on-air coaching calls with my existing clients. And I would do sales success stories with clients who want to come on and talk about their success that they've experienced. And then like everything, I like to continue to expand. And I, I'm somebody who likes new and different. So In 2022, I launched the Mastering Excellence series. Now, this comes from my background in neuro-linguistic programming where there's a presupposition that's known as there is a structure to excellence. And I was so fortunate that I got to meet all these really amazing experts and who really have been able to do certain things in their life that most of us look at and go, how do you do that? How do you know to do that? And during my studies in NLP, I did two Mastering Excellence projects and we had a set list of questions. And it was a team experience where you'd go out, each of you on the team would interview people about a very specific topic. And then we would come back together as a team and we would look for the similarities. And when you interviewing people all around the same topic, what you find is that there really is a structure to how these people excel in a particular area of their life or business. So I decided that I wanted to bring that to the podcast. I wanted to ask those set list of questions and see if we could get some structure to how people really excel in certain areas of their life or their business. So you were so gracious to come on and do a podcast episode recently where we got to ask you your structure behind how you know what questions to ask when in conversation. And it was so revealing. There's so much gold in that episode. And for me, it's a way to provide my audience with an exceptional amount of value from somebody who they've probably never heard you talk about something like that in that way. Absolutely. Well, it's funny because I really enjoyed that episode so much. I I re-listened and it's like, you're very generous, Nikki, because some of my answers were, I have no idea. I really don't know. Or <laughs> you got me there. That's a great question. But the masterful part of this on your end of the microphone is you would then say, well, let me ask it this way or think about it that way. Or let's take a little bit of a different angle in getting into that part of your unconscious competence yeah. And it was before we turned on the microphones of your show, you said, you know, are you willing to kind of just go with the flow? I was like, oh, of course I'm willing to go with the flow, which means I'm willing to be vulnerable. I'm willing yeah. to sound stupid. I'm willing to not know all the brilliant answers. And it was just totally, totally fascinating. So truth telling time, I never listen to podcasts. I don't listen to anybody's podcast ever. I'm now so tempted to go back and listen to your episodes. And I would probably start, selfishly, I would probably start with all of your other Mastering Excellence people. Yeah, they're so Because I find that so fascinating. But I would love to get into the success story episodes and the coaching episodes. Tell us about the coaching episodes. That's a fascinating way to use the podcast. So I do that because, you know, one of the things I know is that sometimes people are hesitant of like, What's it going to be like to coach with somebody? You know, if you if you don't know that person that well. So I did the coaching episodes with an opportunity for people to feel like they get to be a fly on the wall. Like, really, what is it like to coach with Nikki? And what's interesting is a lot of times people who are podcast listeners who then become clients that have private coaching sessions with me often say, You're just like how you are on the podcast. <laughs> you know, and it's like, Yeah. And that's why I do the on-air coaching calls. I don't want anybody to ever show up and be like, who is this chick? She's so different from, you know, how she shows up online or how she shows up in her podcast. Like, really, what you hear is absolutely what you get. So it gives people that primer to hopefully create safety. I think safety is a really important part in the selling process. People should feel safe when they come and have an experience with you. And when people feel safe, I always say it's kind of like, it calms the waters, you know, all of that, like, what if she asked me this? Or what if she tells me this? Or what if she says something and I feel uncomfortable? You know, all of that. Like, I want people to show up and be like, I feel like I can just be vulnerable, give it all to her. She's not going to be mean or harsh or tell me I'm, you know, an idiot for something. It's always going to be positive. It's going to be useful. And so that's why I do the on-air coaching calls. Really, really cool. 
Have you ever done the on-air coaching calls with prospects who are not already clients? I haven't yet. And the reason for that is it's easier, honestly, to find the people who want to come on and do it. Usually, it's people that I pull right from the Sales Maven Society. So some of them have actually never even asked me a live question. Like they've kind of been sitting in the background, yeah. but they'll do it because it's great exposure for their business because they get to talk about their business. So I like that aspect of it from a client standpoint sure. of being able to shine some light on their business. And, you know, I think it is, it feels really, I think, revealing or vulnerable, like you said, for somebody to be willing to come on and ask a question. The thing that I think most people have a misconception about questions, I think we might have talked about this. I think sometimes people think, well, when you're asking a question, it's admitting that you don't know something and that feels vulnerable. And yet in the selling process, I always teach people when you're asking questions, that actually puts you in a position of power. You have more influence when you're asking questions. So I like to give my clients opportunities to ask me questions anytime they can. Wait, 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 wait. We're not just going to listen to this episode. There are downloads, there are resources, there are links, there are bonuses waiting for you on this episode's page when you go over to doitmarketing.com forward slash podcast. That's right, doitmarketing.com forward slash podcast. Grab the notes right under this episode. See you over there. Tell us about the, because this is really fascinating. I think folks listening, if you have a podcast or if you're thinking of starting a podcast, what Nikki just shared about the three kinds of episodes, the teaching episode that is you as the sage sharing your wisdom, your methodology, your training, your tools, your frameworks, that's number one. Number two is the live coaching. So let's say you're a leadership coach or a consultant, you know, leadership hot seat. If you're an innovation person, you do an innovation question. If you're a customer service guru, then it's a customer service question, whatever it is that your topic your expertise is. And then of course, the client success stories, which is like, hey, give us the before, give us the after. What was the win? What was the breakthrough? How did you come to it? How did I help you? What questions did you ask? What changes did you make, etc.? But if you're not doing the client questions, like kind of like the hot seat coaching, I think you're missing out on a lot. So how do you know? Because you're in a long-term relationship with these folks. Some questions are like, oh, I don't want to do that one on the episode. That one's too private or that one's too esoteric or that one's too specific to my situation. How do you vet which kind of question or which specific client you'd want to have on an on-air coaching call? I'm imagining they give their permission to put this on the podcast, et cetera. But how do you select what would make a great episode question? So we throw it out to the audience, to the community, to the Sales Maven Society, and we ask, would anybody be interested in doing either an on-air or a success story? So we let them pick. And then we ask them to share what question they would like to be asked or coached on for the on-air coaching calls. Now, one of the things that I will say, and maybe this is just me, David, and I'm totally fine if you're like, don't do this, if you tell your audience not to do this, but... I have found that at first we were pretty selective about like, oh, we really want an episode around this or around that. But I have found that just by letting people come on and ask whatever question they have, even if it seems like I have done something around that before, the one thing about podcasts is not everybody listens to every episode. So yes, I may have coached around a similar type question before, but there's some different context to it. So my answer might be slightly different or they just never heard that other episode. And I also know with sales coaching, I don't know if you would agree, but I think there's some time release learning to sales coaching. I think sometimes people have to hear things a certain number of times before it really kind of starts to sink in. And also sometimes they'll hear something and they won't think it applies to them. But then when they hear it again, they go, oh, I just had that situation yesterday. I needed to hear this right now. So I look at it as it's a service that I offer to my clients. 
the audience hopefully will get some takeaway from it, which I get feedback. Honestly, the episodes that I always think like, oh, that might be a dud are the ones that people are like, that was so great. And the ones where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a home run. I can't wait for this to air. And people are at least like crickets. And then I'm like, what happened? So I just trust the process. I love that so much. And right, we, you never know, right? Because we have our own lens onto these and it's all about the listener and what they resonate with. So you also have a couple of fabulous books out there that we have not talked about. Tell us a little bit about your publishing journey and what those books are and how that whole thing came to be in the book world. Well, the first book that I ever wrote is called Six Word Lessons on Influencing with Grace. And honestly, I wrote it before I started Sales Maven. It's a hundred NLP tips. So it's these tiny little lessons. It's like the fastest read book you can possibly go through. Hundred little lessons on how to have more influence in your conversations. I wrote it before I launched the business because I thought, I really need to figure out what my next step is. And I don't know when the last time is you've done some job searching, but I was thinking I was going to go back into a corporate job. And I thought that feels like so uh, demoralizing in some ways. So I thought I'm going to write a book while I'm doing this so that I feel like I've accomplished something throughout the summer. So I wrote that book in the summer of 2013, launched the business in the fall of 2013 and never looked back. So that was the first book. The second book is about buying signals. And it's again, it's a short read. I wrote that book because I started talking about buying signals. And people were like, what? There are buying signals that people give? And what am I supposed to say? And so I thought, well, I'm just going to put this in a really short book. So if somebody's never heard about buying signals, they can pay $10. They can get the answer. It'll change their business if they don't know how to recognize and act on a buying signal. And then the third book was me talking about my signature framework. So it's called The Selling Staircase, Mastering the Art of the Sales Conversation. And that really is kind of my my whole framework around selling and my philosophy around selling put into one book. And that was published, I think, in, I don't know, 2018, 2019. And then I thought, I don't think I'll ever write another book. And I have yet to feel the desire to because that was a lot of work. (laughs) <laughs> this is exactly right. People go, you know, it's like you just launched the book. So back in 2019, let's say, and yeah. people go, Nikki, I love your book. When's the next one coming out? Hey, read this one. Read this one first. Slow down there, bucko. How about <laughs> you read this one before you put the pressure on me to write the next one? <laughs> Well, now I just say, go listen to the podcast. There <laughs> like, you go. There listen you go. to the podcast because there's tons of content there for you. For sure. For sure. Tell us a little bit. So you mentioned, obviously, the books are a lead generator. The podcast, your podcast is a lead generator. The podcast that you're on, like this one, for example, lead generator. How else do people come into your world? How else do you generate leads or tell us a little bit about the sales maven approach to prospecting? You know, one of the best approaches for prospecting is we do some things to encourage the Sales Maven Society members to invite their colleagues into the group. So we incent them to do that. And we get some really amazing people because I would say like attracts like. Yeah. So we get amazing people into the society from doing things to incent our members to bring in the people that they know would be a good fit and would benefit from being in the group. I think of all of my marketing efforts, that one feels like the most satisfying because again, those people come in not because of me, but because they really love and respect the person who's encouraging them to come in. Yeah. And so it builds this great community. So when you say incentivizing, we're talking about like a little referral gift. There's some financial compensation for referrals or no? No, actually. So every year we do a member appreciation month where we celebrate our members. So this last year, one of the things that I did, we just did it in February. So it's it's every February we do it. So this last February, I, I started thinking, what can I do that would be different that would entice our members to engage and participate? Because the thing about any training that people invest in, if they don't participate, they're not going to get anything out of it. So I came up with what I call participants. And I gave points for people to do certain activities. So one of the biggest points generator was for them to invite 
one of their friends to come in at a really special rate that was so low that it's almost like it's such an easy yes for someone to say, I'm willing to try that. So I gave them points. And then based on the points at the end of the month, the people who had the most points won some extra prizes. And then the people who, everybody who earned points were then given a gift card that they could then use to apply towards different products from Sales Maven. So that was probably one of the best things I've done this last year because my members brought in some amazing new members as a result of it. But they did other things too. They engaged with the training. They showed up. They asked questions. We also gave them points for having member-to-member calls. So they got to know more of the community this way. It was really a fun month. That sounds incredible. How did you keep track of all of this activity? Is there some (laughs) software or dashboard or was this manual? It was manual. Well, I will say I didn't physically do it. I have a team member who did it. I just created a Google Doc like spreadsheet. And then we had... They had to... Certain things they had to do. So with the member for them to incent other members to join. When that person joined, there was a place for them to put their name in. So we look and track and then give points based on that. And then for the member-to-member calls, they had to fill out a really simple Google form. And so then we gave points for that. And then we can track in our system when people log in and when they complete lessons. So that was probably the most probably time-consuming thing to track. Yeah, That's also where we know that people really get traction is because if they go through the training and they implement what they've learned, they're going to see results. And we had some big results from people who were going through trainings that were like, oh my gosh, you know, I just did this and this happened. And oh my gosh, I just did that. And that other thing happened. So that was pretty exciting. Totally fantastic. I love that a lot. Well, Nikki, as we're, as we're landing the plane here, if folks were to take one overarching concept from our far-ranging and amazing conversation today about listening about you know the NLP parts that we talked about communicating rapport all of that wonderfulness what do you hope that one core takeaway might be i would say the one core takeaway is be willing to adjust your style to put the other person at ease so if it's your rate of speech that's the easiest one cuz you can hear it in any conversation you can hear it in people's voicemails you can hear it in the way they speak on zoom calls or on phone calls be willing to just adjust a little bit, slow down, speed up a little bit and see what happens. Really beautiful, wonderful things will happen as a result. Incredible. Now I know that folks are want, gonna wanna get connected and stay connected to more Nikki Rausch brilliance. Where can we send people resources, gifts, links? Where can we send them? These will all be in the show notes, of course, but give us some parting gifts. Okay, so here's my gift to your audience. I have a training that breaks down the five steps of the selling staircase. So how to have a successful sales conversation. It's called Mastering the Sales Conversation. You can get access to that really simple, easy, quick training by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash selling show. So this is for your audience. So go grab that and then we'll be connected. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, I hang out there. I hang out on Instagram. You can find me under Nikki Roush or Sales Maven. Both will work. That's it. Awesome. So good. Well, my friend, I appreciate you so much. For the folks listening, you absolutely want to connect with Nikki on all of those channels. Those hot links, one click away, are directly under this episode at thesellingshow.com. Nikki Roush, you're a rock star. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for a total home run episode. You're the best. Thank you. And that wraps up another episode of The Selling Show. Hey, tell you what, if you like us, rate us and review us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, tell a friend, go grab the notes and downloads and extras at thesellingshow.com. See you next time. 